time, Gromit. Another perfect landing. Your turn to make breakfast, Gromit. Eggs, I think. And toast with honey today. Step to it, lad. I'm famished. Bring us then. Any orders? Hand it over, lad. Did you bring the mail, Gromit? Oh, I don't know. No. Final demand. I don't know. Waste payment due now. And a disconnection? Nothing but bills, Gromit. I can't look at these before I have my breakfast. If we don't find some steady customers soon, I don't know how we'll make ends meet. Oh, all right then. I'll open one, but just the one? Hmm. Seems your subscription to Marrow Growers Monthly is up for renewal. Don't suppose you'd consider cancelling? Thought not. Oh, better pay up then. Now, where did I put me pen? Ah, yes. Those dog tags I bought you, Gromit. Hi, old Wallace. I'm here, here. Sorry to leave a message, but it's about that incident in my shop. That blinking mechanical mouse of yours has put me in a right pickle. I mean, it may be a sniffer 3000 with advanced cheese tracking capabilities, but it chewed through all me fancy tail and me red lister too. Now, I know we've always been on good terms, but this morning I find myself not inconsiderably discombobulated, and I can't let it happen again, I'm afraid. I'm sorry to say that with the deepest regret, and following police advice, you and your blinking contraptions are barred from my establishment until further notice. Wallace, old chap, come here, Major Crum. Word in your shell like, can't say where it came from, mum's the word, but I'm getting intelligence of unusual airborne activity in your sector. Can't say more than that. Walls have ears, don't you know? But if you take my advice, you look to the heavens and take cover. Going to get pretty sticky, is my guess. Terror from the skies. Death and destruction raining down. That sort of thing. Just make sure you and your men stay indoors. Over and out. 
This is our recorded message for Mr. Wallace of 62 West Wallaby Street from Police Constable Dibbins. That's Delta Indigo Bravo Bravo Indigo November Sierra. Regarding the prototype sniffer 3000 patent pending that was taken into custody at 15.30 hours yesterday afternoon following a disturbance at Mr. Paneer's general stores and Quickie The aforesaid invention will remain in my custody until such time as you, the registered keeper, are able to demonstrate that it no longer poses a threat to public order. In the meantime, I should warn you, it's already nabbed the cheese sandwiches while Mrs. Dibbins put in my lunchbox and have a mind on the picking thing to to scrap. Good morning. That, Gromit, was the sound of my belly. It's saying what I'm too polite to mention. Breakfast is late. Don't push me buttons, Gromit. I suppose I should at least pay the wool bill. Donk is getting a little too independent, if you ask me. Coming, Gromit.
Any news on the breakfast front, Gromit? Done to a turn. My compliments to the chef. But I'm still waiting for the eggs and honey. Cracking eggs, Chuck. But I can't break my fast without honey. Honey pipe directly from the source. Everyone in town will want their own honey tap when word gets out. Honey, how sweet of you, Gromit. <laughs> Now that's what I call a breakfast feast. Wasn't so difficult, was it, lad? With a hearty plate of eggs and toast under me belt, I'm ready to take on the world. Gromit, I've a strange feeling this is the day our fortunes are going to change. Morning, Wallace. May I have a word? Um. Uh, if it's about yesterday's uh, um, little mishap. Oh, no, you see. I can assure you it, it was an accident, Mr. Pinnear, and I'll certainly pay for the damage to your grocery shop. I was just putting the Sniffer 3000 through its paces. It's still only a prototype, you know. Oh, I realize that, Mr. Wallace. And what better place to test out a cheese detector than in a shop with such an excellent selection of cheeses? Happen. But you'll still have to pay for the damage, I'm afraid. Yes, of course. I'll put it all right. Though funds are, how can I put this, a little tight at the moment. Only until our new business is up and running. Aye, well, that's what I'm here to talk about. I understand you and Gromit are in the honey business now. Fresh deliveries daily, from me to you. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps I can help you get on your feet. I'm having my annual sounding of the Crumpets Festival, and I'm clean out of honey. Can you deliver 50 gallons? 50 gallons? By tonight? Tonight? It'll more than cancel your debt, and it'll be good advertising for you. What do you say? I say... I say yes! We're in business, lad! Heads up, no time for slacking. From B to U has landed its first major order. Fifty gallons of honey by tomorrow. I want this place to be a hive of activity. It's your chance to show the world what sort of workers you are. Oh, certainly buzzing with excitement. Or maybe they're hungry. Did you remember to feed them this morning, Gromit? Never mind, lad. I'll do it. Flowers, the perfect meal for a hungry hive. The remote control for my Sniffer 3000. Too bad about the teasing problems. Still, this might come in handy. like an inspirational poster to boost worker productivity. For some reason, my boys aren't terribly fond of this one. The magnetronic pollinator is the linchpin of the operation. My workers get their rations mechanically. No foraging in flower beds for them. Look 
look alive in there. Ah. Oh, hmm, not exactly a flood, is it? Hmm, flowers, Gromit. That's the weak link in our production chain. We need more flowers. Can I find a whole lot of flowers in a hurry? Beautiful morning, Mr. Wallace. I'm pleased to see you've emerged from your subterranean lair. Been doing a spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flip? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. Blooms everywhere. I call it my purple paradise. It certainly looks delicious. I mean... I imagine it would look delicious if you were an insect. You mean, if I were a bee? Well, now you mention it. You want to feed my flowers to your bees? That is, if you don't mind. How many would you like? As many as you can spare. Oh, you can have all you want, Mr. Wallace. Oh, much obliged, Miss Flint. Here. You can jolly well grow your own. Uh, right ho. I wonder what happened to his little cricket bat. Suppose I should have planted the seeds first. I suppose. Have you noticed? I put a new roof on Mr. Nutter's house. Mr. Nutter? Surely you're acquainted with our neighbor, Mr. Nutter, the squirrel. Uh, I'm not on first name terms with any of the neighborhood animals, I'm afraid. What about Gromit? Oh, no, he isn't either. Where's that dog of yours? He's in the cellar, supervising our bees. You keep bees in your cellar? How very odd. Oh, there wasn't space in the dining room. That's a healthy-looking, uh, what do you call it? Foxglove. If you want to grow them, you've got to know them. Such a fragrant bouquet. <clears throat> there now. With hard work and a little luck, you should have a nice bed of flowers in two or three months. I can't wait two or three months. I've got a deadline. This evening. Oh, you poor simple man. Nothing grows that quickly. I wonder. 
Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. Watch them sprout in seconds. Hmm, if it works on people, perhaps I could adapt it to work on flowers. Three miracle ingredients. Grotein, Energize, Strongium. Well, I need a miracle and fast. It shouldn't be too tricky to knock up a batch myself. Then we'll see who's got the grandest garden in West Wallaby Street. The hive will be humming in no time. Can't take an old soldier by surprise. Morning, Major Crumb. It is, if you don't mind enemy invasions. I beg your pardon? Didn't you get my message? Received intelligence of a major air assault. Expect the sirens to sound any minute. Hope you know where your nearest air raid shelter is. I do recall something about that. But, Major Crumb, are you sure you're not mistaken? I know, I know I've made predictions before, but I'm not trying wolf. This time, I've got proof. Not that I wouldn't take any kind of aerial disturbance over West Wallaby Street seriously, you understand. But just pray your house isn't reduced to a pile of smoking rubble. And don't stray too far. You'll want to be close to a shelter when the sirens go off. Uh, no, Major. But still... And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Jar? It's what's inside the jar that counts. Incontrovertible evidence that the enemy is on the move. Does it? I can only see a snail. Of course it's a snail. But what's she trying to tell us? That's the important thing. Uh, what is she trying to tell us? Look at her, man. She's retreated into her shell in the middle of the day. And that means only one thing. It means she knows trouble is about to strike from the heavens. Law of nature, Wallace. Loaded in France during the war. Never wrong yet. Snails can predict imminent airborne disturbances. I never learned that in school. Of course not. They'd never teach anything useful in schools. But when you hear the sirens, you know I'm right. Good man, Wallace. I see you at least appreciate the seriousness of the situation. Now, spread the word. If people don't believe what an old soldier has to say, perhaps they'll listen to the snail. Have you delivered the message? Have you shown them the snail? I'm not sure the snail will convince them, Major Crumb. If she doesn't, the air raid siren will. But by then, it may be too late. Well, what do they have to say now that they've seen the snail? Well, I haven't exactly shown it to everyone. But you must! Look at that poor lass. Not a care in the world. No idea that the alien hordes are about to descend. She doesn't want to face the truth, but it's your duty to shove it in her face. You're looking at my case, aren't you, Wallace? Well, I suppose I was, Major. Bet you'd like to know what's inside. I am curious, yes. Ha! This case is packed full of government issue groating bars. Groating? Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for emergencies, obviously. Been stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. 
I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. You've come buzzing back, Mr. Wallace. As a bee to a blossom, eh? I realise this may seem a trifle irregular, but Major Crumb insisted I show you this. It's... Uh, it, uh, oh. A snail in my garden. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I wonder where Major Crumb disappeared to. Thank heavens you made it to the shelter. I'd given you up for lost. Caught in the crossfire, were you? You've got to get your mind off the carnage up there. Would you like to hear one of my old war stories? Mm, I'd help pass the time. Well, I hate to... Uh... Oh, of course you would. I brought visual aids. <laughs> I can still see it perfectly after all these years. That's all very interesting, Major Crumb, but I wanted to ask you Do about... Do mind, Wallace? I'm in the middle of a story. Oh, there I was, back with my men, back in the thick of it, marching along. Pardon me, Major. About those groating bars of yours. Rations, Wallace. Emergency rations for... Emergencies, obviously. Beach stockpiling them since the war. Enough nutrition in them to feed a man under fire for a whole day. And very tasty they look, too. Tasty? They're foul, but packed with high-strength protein. I'd love to try one. Out of the question, I'm afraid. You don't have clearance. And besides, protein bars are only issued in the event of civil emergencies. Orders are orders, Wallace. By George, this is an emergency. Private Grubbit! I hereby issue you one protein bar. Guard it well, and see that it lasts you all day. Wallace, here's one for you as well. Much obliged. Along with the old chum. Slip me that protein bar Major Crumb gave you. You'll do no such thing, Private Crummit. I gave you your protein bar for the day, Wallace. I won't have you catching another from the enlisted men. I can still see it perfectly. Quick, Gromit, the protein bar. I warn you, Wallace. As long as I'm officer commanding this air raid shelter, each president gets one protein bar per day. You've had yours. Three weeks later, I was... <coughs> what a face. That's me kitted out for heavy combat. That helmet took many a dent before the war was through. Without it, I could have become seriously loopy. Take my advice, Wallace. Never go into battle without a regulation helmet like the one in this picture. I could have stayed in... <clears throat> Who's that fellow? That's me as a young recruit. Off to basic training. How I cried when they cut off my golden curls. But I cheered up as soon as they issued me with a beautiful set of dog tags. Dashed useful dog tags. If you happen to forget your rank or name, you've got it right there. Never go into battle without your dog tags, Wallace. I could have stayed in... Uh, um, now, there's a sight. That's me posing with mother next to my 40mm bofers. 
Look at the size of that monster. Big Betty, we called her. The gun, not the mother. Sounds like you were quite a soldier, Major Crumb. Well, Wallace, why the past tense? Uh, oh dear. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Something you civilians will never grasp. And I'd be happy to prove it by charging into the fray. That is, uh, if I were recommissioned and had a proper helmet with a cute little brim, and if I could find someone to take charge of this shelter and distribute the protein bars. If your heart's set on going into battle, Major Crumb... Oh, it is, Wallace. It is. <laughs> well, then, I don't see why you shouldn't. Go back upstairs, that is. But the protein bars... I'm sure someone else can dispense those. But who? It's a major responsibility, Wallace. I can't entrust these to just anyone. Gromit could do the job. Private Gromit? Can I entrust my precious cache of protein bars to a Pongo? Perhaps so. He's proven himself a trusty foot soldier. Yes. If I am called away to the front, I'd feel comfortable leaving Private Gromit in charge. But I haven't been recommissioned. Careful, Wallace. You're heading into hostile territory. The enemy has clearly landed and most likely set up camp in West Wallaby Street. Who knows what the blighters have done to our once peaceful neighborhood? If you make it back alive, you'll have to give us a full report. In the meantime, eat your protein rations. The protein will keep your strength up, especially if you're captured. Brave lad! We'll keep the home fires burning. That's the racket Gromit used when he took the cup at the Brambleton Open, K-9 Division. Mmm, last night's bedtime snack. Gorgonzola makes a nice change from Wensleydale. Phew, that'll put me right to sleep. This core box has been a boon for Gromit. No matter where he is in the house, he's never far from his master's voice. Oh? <laughs> Trap door. Hmm. Time for a nap. Oh, no, better not. So that's where the dog tags went. I'm sure Gromit will be glad to get them back. Any news from above? Gad, how I wish I were back in the fight! I found these in the hall, Major Gromit. Dog tags! I've been recommissioned! Bound to happen, of course. Can't leave good military material sitting on the shelf. My place is in the treasures. Hmm, yes, that's all very well, I suppose. But I'd need a good sturdy helmet with a cute little brim like the one I had in the war. Ouch! What did you expect, Wallace? You can't snatch a soldier's helmet like that and not hear about it. Queen, God bless her. Sure, she looks thinner. Last time I stood to attention during the national anthem. I 
thought you might find this useful, Major Crum. A helmet? By George Wallace, there's nothing like a good helmet. Makes a fellow want to put himself in the path of projectiles. If you know what I mean. Good heavens, I shouldn't be skulking around in a cellar like a frightened rat. I'm a soldier by thunder. Private Blomit, I hereby appoint you officer commanding this air raid shelter. Here, you pass out the rations. I've got a war to win. Nice cup of strongium tea ought to spark up the old grey matter. Hey, bring that back, you thieving rascal. Hold on a minute. Strongium. That's one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. I need that tea bag. Hello, Wallace. Baneer here again. Just checking on that honey order. Almost ready, I hope. This year's festival of crumpets could be the best yet if your honey is as sweet as you say. So sorry I had to ban you and your inventions from the actual premises. Say the new issue of modern knitting's in, and I put Bromwich's copy to one side. Looks like a perler. You can come and pick it up anytime. No more bread. Cold toast. Shame to let it go to waste. I put a new roof on Mr. Nutter's house. Mr. Nutter? Surely you're acquainted with our neighbour, Mr. Nutter, the squirrel. Uh, I'm not on first name terms with any of the neighbourhood animals, I'm afraid. What about Gromit? Oh, no, he isn't either. Here you are, little fella. Try some toast. Yes, do feed him. I'm sure the little mite's hungry. What are you looking for, exactly? You're persistent in your attentions this morning, Mr. Wallace. Miss Flit, if you would be so kind as to, uh, hand me that tea bag. Tea bag, Mr. Wallace? What tea bag? The one on your, um, uh, ooh. Are you feeling quite well, Mr. Wallace? What is it, Mr. Wallace? I need that tea bag. I see no tea bag. Right. Uh, oh, there. Where? Oh, uh, uh, sitting, um... Sitting? On your, um... Uh, my... Uh, um... My what? Uh, um... The man is quite mystified. 
Verein Sunte Hagen. It's 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 right in front of your eyes. What is? The tea bag. Tea bags again, Mr. Wallace. If you just look down, Miss Flit. Maybe you'd better go and lie down, Wallace, until this silliness passes. You're not making any sense. Uh, they say that the blooms lower down on the plant give off a sweeter scent. Is that so? Uh, yes. You'll discover if you lean way down that... The topmost blooms are perfectly adequate to my needs. Thank you. Oh. Mr. Wallace! Mr. Wallace, I've got something for you. Much obliged. Have you come to deliver my order? Uh, it's not quite ready yet, I'm afraid. You're not going to disappoint me? Not after yesterday's little incident? Oh, no. You can count on from B to U. I don't understand the delay. It's only 50 gallons of honey. Well, the bees get a bit confused. They're on the modern metric system, you see. Takes them a while to do the conversion. Oh. But you will deliver the honey in time for my festival of crumpets, won't you? I'd hate to have to serve jam. Everyone does jam. Don't worry, Mr. Paneer. Your order is in safe hands. My order is on its way? Uh, yes. Of course. Just a few kinks in the production line, that's all. Nothing to fret over. That looks like... Can it really be cheese? Indeed it is, Wallace. Fensleydale, your favourite. And... Am I to take it that these are... Yes, free samples. Go on, duck in. I don't mind if I do, Mr. Paneer. One for now. And one for later. Don't forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. business. So, Wallace, in the honey business now, I hear. Oh, you've heard the buzz, have you? <laughs> oh, oh, indeed I have. It's all over town. It'll never get up the ground. Stupid idea, if you ask me. And nobody did. Couldn't get honey out of a honey jar, that one. Excuse my husband. He's a right misery gut sometimes. So, might you be interested in signing up for my honey deliveries, Mrs. Gabberly? Fresh daily? Oh, I should say so. I'm partial to a spot of honey for my tea. Where's the money? We'll never see honey for tea. Or oh, breakfast, for that matter. Oh, shut up, you. Ah, Wallace knows what he's doing. He's got a head for business. Is that a head? I took it for a parsnip. <sighs> Pay him no mind. If you'd like to sample my honey, Mrs. Gabberly, there'll be a free tasting tonight at Mr. Paneer's Tea and Crumpet Festival. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll have to pop by. I wouldn't bother. He'll never make the delivery. Your husband seems a trifle myth. Don't fret, Pat. He's always miffed about summit. Gin up, Chuck. I'm sure it'll all work out. When will you be bringing the honey to Mr. Paneer's? Uh, soon. I still have one or two technical difficulties to sort out, but I think I'm on the right path. Ha! The path to oblivion, most likely! 
You be quiet! Mr. Gabberley! Gone away! Went to Timbuktu! Won't be back until spring! Mr. Gabberley! Cardly call again! During opening hours! Uh, when are opening hours? Opening hours is when we're not shut! Mr. Gabberley! I'm not at home! I've gone out! Mr. Gabberley! Gone away! Went to Timbuktu! Won't be back until spring! Could those be... Uh, I couldn't help but notice the flowers on your window ledge, Mrs. Gabberley. Ah, uh, lovely, aren't they? Bring a touch of summer to the town square. Especially the purple pansies, always being partial to pansies, me. You should see the flat. It's full of them. Ah, blinking weeds, if you ask me. Can't abide them. Oh, go and suck a lemon, you moaning ninny. Ah. Oh, now look what you've done, you clumsy oaf. And open up that window when I'm yelling at you. All right, <laughs> but only to prove your insults don't get to me anymore. <laughs> I can deflect them all. Is that so? I'd be happy to take these flowers off your hands, Mrs. Gabberley. That is, if they make your husband unhappy. That's a good reason to keep them to my way of thinking. But go ahead if you want them. Much obliged. Pardon me, Mrs. Gabberley. I wonder, uh, that is, could you spare a... Verb. Sorry? Give me a verb, Wallace. An action word. Oh, playing a word game, are we? In a manner of speaking. Oh, well, let's see. A verb. Got to run, Mrs. Gabberley. Then I reckon I'll have to finish it by myself. Do come again, though. Time yet? I'm sorry, what was it you wanted? An action word, you know, like run or jump or circumnavigate. How about to grub? Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. Now I need a thing. A thing? Aye, you know, something physical you could touch. Something I can touch. How about stew? Why not? Now a descriptive word, if you please. Hmm. Uh, mild? Oh, oh, oh that's a corker, that is. <laughs> Last one, nearly done. I need another thing. Or, like a person or animal. Gentlemen? Yes, that's a thing. Hey! What is it now? Go grub a stew pot, you mild gentleman! Hey! You do know how to wound a bloke, Winnie! Serves him right for being such a grumpy old granddad. Would you mind, uh, if I, uh, that is, could you see your way fit to lending me that pot of pansies, Mrs. Gabberley, uh, for business purposes? Business purposes? 
well, be my guest. I've got bunches of them. again, Mr. Wallace? No. Miss Fled, if you'll just take a look at the pansies, I think you'll... I told you, Mr. Wallace. I refuse to let those yellow hooligans have the satisfaction of... Oh, Paul, you see? They're mending their ways. They just needed a firm talking to, that's all. Mother forgives you, you naughty little pansies. Sweet satisfaction, Mr. Wallace. Yes, indeed. Very sweet. Have you brought it, Mr. Wallace? Have you come to deliver my order? Uh, it's not quite ready yet, I'm afraid. You're not going to disappoint me? Not after yesterday's little incident? Oh, no. You can count on from B to you. May I have another, Mr. Pneer? Go ahead, Mr. Wallace. Nature's pick-me-up. Forget, Mr. Wallace, 50 gallons by sunset. Well, if it isn't Wallace. I had a notion he'd be nosing round the police station this morning. The poor sniffer 3000. I only just put the finishing touches on it yesterday, and it's already fallen afoul of the law. Morning, Constable Dibbins. You're off to an early start today. Not planning any more visits to the shops, are you? Oh, no. Yesterday was a one-off. I'm in town on business. Is that so? Here on business, you say, Wallace. What line are you in these days? Honey, Constable Dibbins, from B to you. Piped fresh to your home or workplace daily. Do you have a sweet tooth, Constable? Well, I have been known to dollop it on a crumpet now and again. Then perhaps you'd like to subscribe. I only procure my honey from a reputable sources. You can rely on from B to you for your honey needs, Constable. As our motto says, all the sweet and none of the sting. So long as it's nothing like your Sniffer 3000 cheese detecting device. Put your mind at ease, Constable. All our bees are bonded and insured. Hmm, not killer bees from abroad, are they? Certainly not. They're West Wallaby Street born and bred. Not so much, I suppose. Mr. Paneer will unveil my honey at tonight's Festival of Crumpets. Is that so? Well, if Mr. Paneer's prepared to take a chance on you, I suppose I can too. So, can I sign you up for my honey service, Constable Dibbins? I'll pop over to Mr. Paneer's and have a taste, if I like it. And there's no undesirable side effects. We'll see. I, I, I noticed you received my petition for early release of the Sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins. Yes, and I notice it's attracted the signatures of just one man and his dog. 
we're only appealing for natural justice. But your blinking cheese detector thingamabee, what do you call it, destroyed an entire grocery store. Uh, teething problems. It's still only a prototype. A prototype? It's a villain, if you ask me. A diabolical device. You can see that in its face. My machine isn't evil, Constable Dibbins. It's just got a short fuse and a few loose nuts. Hmm, we'll see. I'm going to formally interview this glorified tin can of yours, and if it can convince me that it's not a menace to society, then perhaps I'll release it into your custody. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. Fear not, my little cheese-sniffing friend. Soon have you out of there. The sniffer doesn't work that way, Constable Dibbins. You've got to... I'm conducting this interview, Wallace, if you don't mind. I was right about this heap of scrap. <laughs> It's wired for wickedness. We've had our little chat, and I'm afraid there's no talking to your sniffer. Hard wired for criminality, I'd say. Must be awfully hot under that helmet, I reckon. A sunny day like today. It's a trifle sweltering, yes. But danger and discomfort are all in the line of duty for an officer of the law, though most folk don't appreciate it. see fit to grant my appeal, Constable Dibbins? Not on your Nelly. That heap of nuts and bolts is now but trouble. Couldn't give me a single straight answer when I tried to interrogate it. It only responds to certain commands. I know, I programmed it. Perhaps you could try a gentler approach? Well, I'll have another chat with it. More friendly like. Oh, yes. Oh, much obliged, Constable Dibbins. I ain't promising nothing, mind. Time we had a little chat. Look at me when I'm talking to you. more like it. Now you've had time to think, what can you tell me about what happened yesterday? Feel bad about what you did, do you? Blasted impertinence! change, I'm afraid. And its moral compass seems to be badly malfunctioning. Oh, there's Miss Sniffer 3000, banged up like a common criminal. Oh, breaks my heart. That cheese detector's not a bad machine, just a bit over keen. It's all the energites in its system. Energites? It seems to me... Yes. Energites is one of the ingredients in Rex Armstrong's quick grow muscle formula. I used my last energite battery to fuel the sniffer. I'll have to get it back if I want to finish the formula.
How long do you intend to hold my sniffer 3000, Constable Dibbins? As long as the law requires. It's not malicious. It just malfunctions from time to time. Is that so? And sometimes it short circuits when it gets overheated. Perhaps it does. Why, why don't you try <clears throat> talking to it once more? All right. Once more. You there, prisoner. Kindly look at me when I'm talking to you. That's what I like to see. Do you regret what you did? He's weeping. Maybe this contraption's got feelings after all. Now, I want a truthful answer. If I release you from custody, will you do it again? I'll be damned. The prisoner has been interviewed. Yes. And having exhibited signs of repentance, I am prepared to release you into your protective custody. Provided, Wallace, you give me an assurance that you'll keep your blinking eye on him. Or it. Or whatever he answers to. I'll keep an eye on him, Constable Dibbins. You have my word on that. The mixomatic will be perfect for whipping up a tasty growth formula. One dose of strongium into the mix. <laughs> One unit of energite fluid for a creamy finish. Now to get my hands on a protein bar. Grommet. Request dispensation of protein bars, uh, soldier. One generous chunk of protein to give it texture. Now to mix up my very own quick grow muscle formula.
That ought to do it. No, the Mixomatic's all mixed up. Stop! Stop! Help! Drum it! Oh, thanks, lad. Checking to see if anything's sprouted yet, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Flit... Really? I don't see what you're hoping to... Oh! I don't believe it! It works! It works! The homemade quick grow miracle muscle formula works! We're in business now! You see, Gromit? Look where a bit of enterprise can get you. If I hadn't found that flyer you chucked in the bin, I'd never have been able to concoct my miracle grow formula. And then where would we be? You really must be careful what you chuck out, you know. Uh, Lincoln, Nora! Oh, my word! I think I'm going to faint. This ought to be plenty of fuel for the old pollinator. Champion, that is. Fifty gallons of honey and just in time for my annual tea and crumpet festival. Pleasure doing business with you, Wallace. Always aim to please, our bees. That's the last of our bills, Gromit. And we've got just about enough left over for that little holiday we've been planning. This year, I fancy... Blackpool. Oh, oh yes, lad. I think our money troubles are over at last. Air raid! Air raid! Petal oh stations everywhere! Not this again. Excellent vantage point. Prepare for a crash landing, you devils! Sorry, Wallace, but I'm going to have to come near your dining room. Uh, now, just a minute, Major Cross. No time to argue, old man. The whole town's under bombardment. But here they come! <laughs> An egg from it. Giant bees. Heaven help the good citizens of West Wallaby Street. Civilians out. But that's an order, Wallace. Private Gromit, kindly escort this civilian from the battle zone. That's right, soldier. Help steady my aim. Got him! Got the blatter! Cheeky devils won't! Carry on, soldier! Good heavens, Gromit! You don't suppose those monsters have anything to do with our honey-making operation, do you? Bumbling egg! My quick-grow formula! It didn't just affect the flowers! Just hope it's a wrong number, and not more bad news.
Okay. I'm trapped in this tree by giant bees. Do you understand? You must take a message to your master. I need him to get me down from here. Can you tell him that? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Give him this. It. It's looking grim out there. Good man, Private Gromit. Help me bring these blighters down. Bullseye! Private Gromit? Why, I feel like a young man again. Calls for a celebration, Private. Meet you in the mess in 20... Mr. Paneer, uh, well, of course you're upset. Being dive-bombed by giant bees isn't good for any business. Uh, we're doing all we can to get the situation under control. Uh, normal honey service will be resumed as soon as possible. Uh, with normal-sized bees, that's a promise. There's a giant fly in the soup, lad, and it's shaped like a bee. They're taking over the town. Time to read the riot act. I am their employer, after all. Oh! They won't listen. They're completely out of control. This funny business has a sting in the tail and no mistake. 
No! Do something for me! Hello, from B to... Oh, Constable Dibbins. Uh, yes, I know, I know, it's terrible. Oh, I don't know that I'd say that. Well, well, after all, it was an innocent mistake. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not as daft tapers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Just a minute. What's this? Flip frying pan, lad. The timer mechanism is very delicate. It's liable to spring at odd moments. I didn't give him the flowers he wanted, isn't it? a few hooligan bees keep you from your business. Ooh, blinking Nora, look at Mr Paneer, shut up in his shop like a prisoner, and all on account of a few blinking bees. You don't see Winnie Gabberley chucking in the towel, didn't close during the Hedgehog Riots of 72, and I ain't closing now. Besides, where would I go if I did? I ain't going back to it flat with old man Gabberley. Not till he says he's sorry. Tossed out all me pansies, he did. Ah, Mr. Gabble here. I ain't much good at eating humble pie. But I spoke out a turn yesterday. You're not a daft apers after all. What I said to you, I'll take it all back. You're a credit to the town. Well, biting dogs come limping home. There now, weren't so hard, were it? Is that you, Winnie? Breaking code of silence, are you? No need for silence now you've shown a bit of humility. Humility? Me? Never. Oh, you don't fool me. You're just a big old softy, and I know it. Hey, I need me head examined, keeping shop open when town's crawling with giant bees. What's got into you, Winnie? Stay back, I say. Oh, Winnie Gabble.
don't have my job for you. Sorry for the delay, Mr. Paneer. I think you'll find the streets are now be free. Thank heavens for the boys in blue. Now, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the station. There's some paperwork we need to fill out. Nothing too bothersome. Happy to do my part. It's citizens like you what make my job a pleasure, Mr. Paneer. with you now. Very busy at the moment. Haven't time for inquisitive dogs. Oh, and tell that master of yours he left Summit behind. I know Constable Dibbins. Well, yes, like I said, he's very well trained. Right then, goodbye, Constable. Good work, lad. Seems you took care of the downtown gang good and proper. But so long as they're still supersized, our job's only half done. I'd better get to work on a reverse growth formula. Bees trapped in town and in the front garden, too. You're a regular big game hunter, aren't you, Gromit? <laughs> but there's one job remaining. The nerve center. I'd go down to the cellar myself and, and take care of the problem, but the blighters seem to have a bee in their bonnet about yours truly. You do it, Gromit. You're good with animals. I'll stay up here and work on the reverse growth formula.
What's this, lad? An SOS note? From Miss Flit. Why didn't you show it me earlier? Hang on, Miss Flit. Help is on the way. Ow! It's no use, lad. The bees outside may be neutralized, but the ones inside are still buzzing mad, and they won't let me leave. It's up to you, Gromit. Pacified all the bees, Gromit. Good lad. I knew I could count on you. That's right. Poor Miss Flit is still trapped in that tree, isn't she? Help! Get me down from here! Don't panic. I'm coming, Miss Flit. Oh, Seems I'm underdressed. Gracious! Hang on, Miss Flint! <coughs> My saviour! So that's the story, Miss Flit. I'm afraid my miracle growth formula led to some uh, supersized problems. I hope you're going to get rid of the infernal stuff. Oh, I am. And rest assured, all the bees have been dealt with safely and humanely. Well, that's a relief. But weren't you scared facing down an angry swarm of giant bees all by yourself? Frightened? Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I was heavily outnumbered, of course, but uh, they soon saw who was boss and that the uh, sting was on the other foot. I was terrified. That's only natural, Miss Flit. Uh, uh, well, I had a twinge or two myself at times, you know, but keep a cool head. That's my motto. Look your adversary square in the eye and never let yourself get carried away. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Lincoln 
Nora! The Queen's trying to turn me into royal jelly! The ingratitude! After I've built her a hive in solid brass and a magnetronic pollinator thingamajig to take all the hard work out of honey making. Oh, I'm beginning to think I should never have mixed this growth formula at all. I ought to chuck it away. Hey, easy old girl. No need to get excited. Put me down gently and no one will get hurt. Oh dear. Nothing in the beekeeper's manual about aerial abduction. Help! Help! Draw me! Butter boy, I knew you'd come through. Raise the ladder, Dad. I'm up here, Gromit, not back there. broken and I left the spare at home. Gromit? Gromit? Gromit! You all right, love? Oh, good show! We've made it through this little episode in one piece. More than I can say for the autopilot, I'm afraid. Oh, the autopilot! Oh dear, looks like our troubles aren't quite over. Look out behind you, Gromit! Keep her at bay! I'll try and lose her in here!
no plenty of honey in the old tank. Hmm, perhaps the honey could use a little kick.